So I took the GMAT uh, because I'm going for a financial mathematics course uh, for which you know GMAT could also be have could also have been given. So I took uh, three months of preparation for GMAT. I am a working professional, so I used to used to come back uh, after work uh, and then dedicate two hours of study uh, every day. And as it grew near, as the exam dates uh, came near, so I started to put in more hours. I almost spent my weekends fully, uh, you know, almost seven, eight hours on Saturdays and Sundays preparing. And I gave a lot of uh, mock tests. I mainly gave a lot of mock tests in my last uh, month uh, before the test, before the actual test. So it kind of helped get the real feel. And before that, the previous uh, month, I practiced all the, you know, most questions from the official GMAT book, uh, which are published. I got a 700 in GMAT. Uh, my visa experience personally was very smooth and I would, uh, you know, credit uh, Yorkit for it because I used to read all the visa experiences of all the students who used to post on the Facebook group. So I kind mm -hmm. of, before going for the visa interview, I kind of knew as in what to tell, what not to tell, you know, uh, how confident one should be and all those things. It kind of, uh, I kind of gained that from the experiences from the you know people who who shared it on Facebook, and my personal experience was you know uh, she asked me uh, how I'm gonna fund fund my studies, and the game changer for me was that I had a scholarship uh, from the university. So once I told her that I got a scholarship, you know she kind of was kind of impressed and told her okay great I'm approving the visa. Uh, but one thing I want to point out is that. So I would be going for my second master's here. So the visa officer asked me that why would you want to go for another master after having another, uh, after having a, a master's already in India. So there I kind of had to convince her that this is a more advanced degree and it would kind of uh, give me a, you know, strengthen my fundamentals, give me more knowledge in this particular uh, field. So I'm going for MS yeah. in financial mathematics. So I had to tell her that Although I had an MBA in general management, but then this financial mathematics course was focused on the advanced mathematical applications in the world of finance. Uh, so I kind of gave her a small example as in, uh, you know, an MBA would probably know what a financial derivative is, but an MS in mm -hmm. financial mathematics student would know how it is priced, how it is structured. And she kind of seemed, seemed convinced with that answer. So I enrolled in the University of Cincinnati, Ohio, and the degree I'm going to is MS in Financial Mathematics. So it's a two semester course. Uh, it's basically uh, one can complete it in nine to 10 months. In the first semester, you choose, you know, some basic courses, uh, some mandatory courses rather, uh, like accounting, uh, forwards and options, advanced financial statement analysis, econometrics, and so on. In the second semester, uh, one can specialize in among one of the four topics which is offered by the university. So the four tracks are basically uh, portfolio management, uh, risk management, corporate finance, or real estate. So I plan to uh, specialize in risk management. So yeah, I mean, I have been hearing all kinds of uh, news, all kinds of stories uh, about the job scenario. Uh, one thing which helped me is that I kind of met the director of the finance program at uh, University of Cincinnati when he came to India last year. And I kind of asked this question to him in person. And what I came to or what rather he told me is that uh, although, you know, the the new uh, the government out there right now are, you know, thinking of imposing some uh, kind of restrictions, but nothing is in place as of now. So it's all speculation. Uh, what we in Indians, what we in India are thinking. And one more thing, uh, which is that, which he advises that uh, international students who are going there, if they have some amount of uh, work experience, like even a couple of years of work experience or more, uh, would be at a benefit because uh, going further after your, uh, you know, after your computer or PD and CPT, then uh, if the companies want to file a H1B for you, they would want to you know, put it on a person and put the money on a person who already has some kind of an experience. Although, I mean, uh, in places like technology, freshers are very welcome. But then if I'm going for a specialized degree, like like the one I'm going for, like a financial mathematics. So I have uh, five years of uh, work experience in financial services. So, uh, you know, it's advisable, uh, according to what he told, is that to go for specialized or niche courses. 
uh, like the one I'm going, some amount of work experience will definitely help in, you know, bagging an internship, a good internship in a good firm or a job going further. So at the skill, yeah, the, I mean, the courses would add the required skill sets to you, uh, the required knowledge mm -hmm. to you. Uh, but, uh, uh, I mean, if you have some kind of, uh, relevant experience to back it up, you know, it would be a great addition to your profile. So, um, I joined Yokit, Yokit last year sometime. And one of the things which has definitely helped is that the whole student community uh, who are applying for the U.S. universities, it helped me connect to people who are applying to the courses such as uh, the same as mine or going to the similar universities uh, to which I applied. So in order to gain more knowledge, I think it's a great place to reach out to existing students who are studying out there. Uh, new, I mean, uh, students who are applying this year. So UCAT has built a great community of students, I would say. One thing which has definitely helped is the visa experiences which are shared on Yorkit. I mean, it, it kind of, you know, it built in me more confidence while I was preparing for the visa interview. Uh, and it kind of made it a sort of a much more smooth, smoother experience for me. Uh, one, one other thing which Yorkit really helped is that shortlisting the, is in shortlisting the universities uh, for the particular right. course. Yeah. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. the students, uh, the existing students out there, they know, you know, uh, which universities uh, are good because one cannot do all the research by himself. I strongly believe that. And that is where a community helps, you know, uh, the knowledge which I am Absolutely. lacking, you know, the other person can fill it up for me. That's a great way uh, in which Yorkit has connected us to a lot other students in the community. Uh, you know, in terms of preparation, I would say that... Uh, uh, I have given GMAT, so I can talk about GMAT, is that, you know, dedicate uh, some hours uh, on a daily basis, you know, do the questions which are there in the uh, official book. It is really similar to that. Uh, I know we have a tendency in, in doing uh, tougher questions like Manhattan and others. I mean, it's great if you can find time to do that, but definitely do the official questions. It will definitely build uh, confidence in, your, in you as you go to give that exam. Uh, secondly, uh, while you choose the universities, uh, make sure that uh, you do not go just for the university, but it offers the subjects and the courses which you are looking for. So I, uh, you know, had to go forego uh, some top universities because it was not offering that particular, uh, you know, specialization which, which I was looking for. So, I mean, I chose my universities depending upon what I wanted to study rather than where I wanted to study. Yes, universities are very important, the ranking of universities, everything. But you should also, you know, choose an university which offers courses uh, which will help you, uh, you know, gain that knowledge going for further. Uh, mm -hmm. Thirdly, do follow the visa experiences which other students share. It is a, you know, it's a great platform to learn what is being asked in that interview, what to tell, what not to tell, uh, you know, how, you know, confident you should be, uh, what are the things you should speak, what are the things you should not speak. Uh, so I, I personally feel that, you know, this suggestion was given to me by someone is that schedule your visa interview sometime in May end or June beginning, because uh, some people would be giving their interviews in the beginning of May. You can learn from their experiences, uh, at least, you know, if you read 10 to experiences, by the time your uh, chance at the visa interview comes, you are definitely more prepared. So I mean, this was something which a senior told me, you know, schedule your interview in either May end or uh, June beginning. So I scheduled my interview in on June 6th, which was a student visa day. So it was all uh, student interviews that day. And I was seeing, you know, all around while I reached the uh, embassy, uh, people, you know, very tensed and everything. But, you know, most of the uh, visas were getting approved. Mm -hmm. I had given the TOEFL also, and I had a score of 118 on 120 in TOEFL. So I would like to, you know, give some uh, advice to students who are giving TOEFL on how they can score more. So basically, uh, you know, as most people know, TOEFL has four sections, reading, writing, speaking, and listening. So I think reading and uh, listening, most Indian students would be able to do well in that. The sections where one drop points are the ones, uh, you know, uh, speaking and writing. So I think uh, one important uh, point while you prepare for TOEFL is that, you know, make uh, sure that you 
converse regularly in english with your friends you know while uh, speaking to your family you know because whatever is asked in toefl is pretty easy it is just normal conversation but you get to have that you got to have that flow of thought the chain of thoughts while you're speaking which a lot of indians struggle with uh, secondly while coming to the writing section you know just start writing some you know some essay or some topic on which you really like uh, you know every day just write something you know because uh, in toefl you would be given something on which you would be asked to like put your make your own thoughts uh, and it's not, not that difficult i mean uh, so if you like write regularly practice regularly uh, i mean it's a great way to prepare for it and i think toefl is a pretty pretty easy exam it's very crackable and uh, i studied for like around 2 to 3 days properly and i got 118 on 120 of that so i mean it's a pretty crackable exam for me and for others also i think